Good evening, this is your anchor, Kekrizanyo Solo, bringing you the top stories of the hour. First, the headlines. In a stern and uncompromising message to criminal elements in Uttar Pradesh, Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath said, Bulldozer Bitayar Beta, signaling his unwavering commitment to tackling or unorganized crime and lawlessness in the state. Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal on Sunday slammed the central government over the One Nation, One Election proposal and said the BJP has come up with a new gimmick, One Nation, One Election. The Nobel Foundation has U-turned on a controversial decision to invite the ambassadors of Russia and Belarus to the Nobel Prize Award ceremony after facing widespread criticism and stated that Sweden stands behind Ukraine. Chandrayaan 3 rover Pragyan has been put into sleep mode now as it completed all its assignments. The rover has traversed over 100 meters on the moon's surface and now has been parked safely. Now for the news in details. In a stern and uncompromising message to criminal elements in Uttar Pradesh, Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath said, Bulldozer be tayar beta, signaling his unwavering committing commitment to tackling unorganized crime and lawlessness in the state and added that bulldozers will be ready for the people who will dare to ca capture a farmer's or a businessman's land. This is nonsense approach has earned Yogi Adityanath a reputation for taking decisive action against the mafia and sending a clear message that there will be zero tolerance for criminal activities. His words serve as a stark warning to those involved in illegal activities, signaling that the state machinery is fully prepared to root out criminal elements and to bring them to justice. As the Ghosi by election Uttar Pradesh Deputy CM Rajesh Patak alleged that Samajwadi Party candidate Sudhakar Singh and his son, who is the block chief, called an officer of Kirti Jafarpur police, posed and threatened him for not supporting Samajwadi Party and also threatened to beat with shoes outposts in charge Saroj, who come from Dalit community. The Samajwadi Party enraged as it knows they will lose and stoop to any level and can commit any kind of violence, he said. He further said that we are going to launch a complaint with the election commissioner through our official head. 
We are going to lodge a complaint with the Election Commission through our official head. Hope they will investigate. There is complete preparation to loot the Samajwadi Party's boot. The work of calling goons from all over the state and putting them on the boot has been done, he alleged. विषय घोषी में उपचुनाव हो रहा है और पांच तारीख को पोलिंग है कल समाजवादी पार्टी के जो प्रत्याशी हैं श्री सुधाकर सिंह जी उनके सुपुत्र जो ब्लॉक प्रमुख है उन्होंने कुर्थी जापुर कुर्थी जाफरपुर एक पुलिस चौकी है उसके एक आरक्षी को फोन करके धमकाया कहा कि समाजवादी पार्टी के पक्ष में आप काम नहीं कर रहे हो आप यादव समाज से हो और तुम्हारा जो चौकी इंचार्ज जो दलित समाज से है कहा कि चौकी इंचार्ज जो सरोज है उनको आकर के हम जूते से पीटेंगे और धमकाने का काम किया समाजवादी पार्टी पूरी तरह से अराजकता पर गुंडई पर उतर आई है अपनी हार से बौखला करके समाजवादी पार्टी किसी भी प्रकार के वायलेंस को कर सकती है चुनाव में हम आज निर्वाचन आयोग में अपने पार्टी के पदाधिकारियों के माध्यम से एक शिकायत दर्ज कराने जा रहे हैं कि निर्वाचन आयोग संज्ञान ले जो कुकृत्य समाजवादी पार्टी के प्रत्याशी के पुत्र द्वारा किया गया है पुलिस प्रशासन को खुलेआम धमकी दी गई है जूते से मारने की धमकी दी गई है और कहा गया है कि हम तुम्हें सस्पेंड करा देंगे जानते नहीं हो कि हम हाँ सुधाकर सिंह के बेटे हैं सुधाकर सिंह चुनाव लड़ रहे हैं इस प्रकार की गुंडई अराजकता जो समाजवादी पार्टी के डीएनए में प्रारंभ से ही हम ये बात कहते आ रहे हैं आज ये बात प्रमाणित हो गई है कि समाजवादी पार्टी चुनाव में अपनी हार को सुनिश्चित मान करके किसी भी क्षण भयंकर वायलेंस करा सकती है गुंडई करा सकती है बूथ लूटने की पूरी तैयारी इनकी है बूथ बूथ पर गुंडे पूरे प्रदेश से बुलाकर समाजवादी पार्टी ने लगाने का काम किया है हम निर्वाचन आयोग से अपील करते हैं कि पूरे प्रकरण का संज्ञान लेकर के जितने भी इस प्रकार के गुंडे हैं माफिया हैं असामाजिक तत्व हैं उनको घोसी में मऊ में घुसने पर रहने पर पाबंदी लगाई जाए और इस पूरे प्रकरण पर थाने में एफ दर्ज करा दी गई है जो सुसंगत धाराओं में है और तत्काल गिरफ्तारी होनी चाहिए गिरफ्तारी होने के साथ ही उनके जो हथियार बंद लोग हैं जो गुंडे लोग हैं खुलेआम आम जनता को धमकाने का काम कर रहे हैं कल रात में सूचना मिली कि समाजवादी पार्टी के कुछ लोग गाड़ियों में पैसा भर करके घूम रहे हैं चुनाव को अपने सिस्टम से निकलता देख करके हार सुनिश्चित मान करके तो मैं निर्वाचन आयोग से मांग करता हूं कि पूरी निष्पक्षता के साथ चुनाव हो और हर स्थिति में किसी भी स्थिति में गुंडों को वहां घुसने न दिया जाए जो अराजक तत्व तो है उनको पाबंद किया जाए उनको जिले से बाहर किया जाए और बाहरी गुंडों को तत्काल घोषित से बाहर किया जाए Moving on to the next news. Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal on Sunday slammed the central government over the One Nation One Election proposal and questioned the rationale behind the move. Taking to X, the Delhi CM asked what is important for the country, One Nation One Election or One Nation One Education? equal education for the rich and the poor. What will a common man get from one nation, one election? Asked Kejriwal. The BJP has come up with a new gimmick, one nation, one election. He said and asked what will people get from one election or 10 elections or 12 elections. He said people want one nation, one education. Everyone should get the same level of education. We don't care if there is one election or thousand elections, he said. सबको एक जैसी शिक्षा मिलनी चाहिए अमीर के बच्चे को भी अंबानी के बच्चे को अडानी के बच्चे को जैसी शिक्षा मिलती है वैसे मेरे किसान के और मजदूर के बच्चों को मिलनी चाहिए वन नेशन वन एजुकेशन होना चाहिए नीचे हम लोगों को वन नेशन वन इलेक्शन 
वन इलेक्शन तुम रखो हमारी बना से हजार इलेक्शन करा लो दो हजार इलेक्शन करा लो हमको क्या फर्क पड़ता है वन नेशन वन एजुकेशन वन नेशन वन इलाज सबको अच्छा इलाज मिलना चाहिए चाहे गरीब का आदमी हो चाहे अमीर आदमी हो अच्छे से अच्छा शानदार इलाज सबके सबको मिलना चाहिए मिलना चाहिए नहीं मिलना हमारा तो फायदा तभी है जब वन नेशन वन एजुकेशन होगा हमारा तो फायदा तभी है जब वन नेशन वन इलाज होगा हमें वन नेशन वन इलेक्शन से क्या लेना देना तुम्हारे चोच नहीं है तुम रखो अपने घर अपने चोच Regarding that, the Centre on Saturday constituted an eight-member committee to examine and make recommendations for holding simultaneous election in the country. Assam Rifles organized a musical fest under the theme Rhythm of Nagas in Dimapur on 2nd September 2023. The event was organized with an aim of fostering the talented youth of Nagaland and providing a platform to showcase the Naga culture and its unbreakable bond with music. The event was graced by late General H.S. Sahi, AVSM, YSM, SM, GOC, Spear Corps as Chief Guest and Mage General Vikas Lakhera, IGAR, among other senior officials. The musical fest witnessed an overwhelming attendance of more than 200 persons who were left spellbound by the immense talent of the participants. The event concluded with felicitation of the extremely talented participants by the chief guest, Lieutenant General H.S. Sahi. The musical fest Rhythm of Nagas organized by Assam Rifles is a living testimony to the wholehearted commitment of Assam Rifles towards the promotion of Naga culture and was greatly appreciated by the attendees. The Bhatia Janata Party's Tamil Nadu unit has decided to campaign extensively against the statement of the State Minister for Sports and Youth Affairs Udhaya Nidhi Stalin against the Sanatana Dharma. Udhaya Nidhi Stalin has said that Sanatana Dharma has to be eradicated just like mosquitoes, malaria, dengue and corona. Condemning the statement, Tamil Nadu BJP President K. Anamalai questioned as to who is Udhaya Nidhi Stalin to abolish Sanatan Dharma. What Stalin spoke, all 142 crore Indians should condemn it and that the visceral hatred of DMK government for a particular region came out, he reported. It is not about uh, Hindu outfits or uh, Hindu leaders or uh, people practicing uh, Hindu religion criticizing. The word Sanatana Dharma, it is there even before Christian religion came or an Islamic religion came or for that matter any other religion came. Sanatana Dharma means <coughs> eternal Dharma, timeless Dharma, a dharma that will stand the test of time. That is the meaning of Sanadana Dharma. It is there for a long, long, long time. Even before what Uday Nidhi in December 2022, he calls himself as a Christian. Even before that it came. Now, why what Uday Nidhi spoke yesterday, every Indian, all the 142 crore Indians should condemn this because the visceral hatred for a particular religion has come out yesterday. Last year, Every year, the Dravida Kalagam and their like-minded people, they keep organizing some or the other conference. Last year it was Sanadana Opposing Conference. This year it is Sanadana Eradication Conference. They have gone one level up to say eradication. And the speech that he gave, I, I saw his speech also. I don't think he was speaking verbatim. If somebody is speaking verbatim, uh, looking at people, then we can say probably the words got slipped out. He was reading from a prepared text which means consciously the text was prepared. In a stage, he was reading it line by line. We can very clearly make out from his body language, where he says like cholera, like dengue, like mosquito, like COVID. Sanadana should be eradicated. Eradication of a particular culture. If, if I can equate some other word to it, it's called genocide. That is what Hitler did for Jews. And that is the level to which a sitting minister of Tamil Nadu government speaks it. So not only Hindu religion who are practicing, every person in India, all the 142 crore people of India should condemn it. Opposing is something different. Political ideology you can oppose, that's okay. You oppose, somebody will give another alternate ideology, that's okay. It's up to the people to accept it. Now, you, you, you believe since you have the power in hand and you, you are brazen enough to say we want to eradicate, it only shows what is the level of mindset they have and the kind of intelligence they have in their mind. 
Now, Mr. Udayanidhi Stalin and all the DMK people have to understand. Mughals tried, they couldn't do it. East India Company tried, they couldn't do it. The Christian missionaries who came only to southern part of India, specifically to Trinalveli, to parts of Kanjipuram, Chennai, they tried their best in the late 1800s, they couldn't abolish it. Who's Udayanidhi Stalin to abolish Sanadana Dharma? It can never be abolished. And it only shows this government is essentially anti-Hindu. DMK government has got a visceral hatred for Hindu. That got manifested yesterday. A lot of our North Indian friends and people from other parts of India have seen. But for people in Tamil Nadu, it's a daily way of life. And very unfortunate, the temple administration minister, in Tamil Nadu we call the TNHRNC minister, the temple administration minister, he is also in the stage, endorsing what Udayanidhi Stalin is speaking along with Ki Viramani. And this has to be roundly condemned. And this is also a fit case. And somebody has taken a oath on a constitution trying to serve the public. This happens because people get into political power very easily. Udayanidhi Stalin is there because of his grandfather, Karnanidhi, and because of his father, Stalin. Somebody, if they have come up the hard way, seen real people, be a part of their struggle, they clearly know what to speak and what not to speak. Time for a short break. We'll be back with more news. Welcome back. Moving on to the next news. As part of its preparation for the upcoming G20 summit in the national capital on September 9 and 10, Delhi Traffic Police on September 3 conducted another full dress rehearsal at Delhi's India's Gate. It also conducted rehearsal for the left and drive motorcade in the Delhi Gate area. Speaking with ANI on G20 summit, Karkit rehearsals, DCP Traffic Ala Patel said, Rehearsals are going on for the programs that are scheduled on September 10. Full deployment is on the venues where delegations have to come on the same day. There was no congestion and traffic management was also fine. I would appeal Delhi public to also read the directories for September 8, 9 and 10 and contribute. The carcade and motorcade rehearsals were carried out in the area of the national capital where the global event would be hosted this month. This exercise was meant to ensure smooth vehicular movement during the mega event. The two-day summit will draw leaders and delegates from 40 countries, including the 20 member states. Many heads of the state, including U.S. President Joe Biden, Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, and French President Emmanuel Macron, are expected to attend the G20 leaders summit. आज जो रिहर्सल हो रही है वो 10 सितंबर को जो भी शेड्यूल है उसकी रिहर्सल हो रही है इसके तहत कारकेड की मूवमेंट्स हो रही है जो वेन्यूज है जहां पर 10 तारीख को डेलीगेशंस ने आना है वहां पर भी डिप्लॉयमेंट है फुल डिप्लॉयमेंट उनका भी प्रैक्टिस चल रहा है जो आज मुख्य उद्देश्य ये है कि होटल से राजघाट की मूवमेंट की प्रैक्टिस हो जाए राजघाट से प्रगति मैदान प्रगति मैदान से होटल और एयरपोर्ट की भी प्रैक्टिस हो जाए और इन सभी वेन्यूज पे जो कार्यवाही होनी है उसकी भी प्रैक्टिस हो जाए मुख्य तौर पे आप समझिए कि सात बजे ऑनवर्ड्स कार्यक्रम शुरू हो जाएगा 
और देर रात 11 बजे तक चलेगा 10 तारीख को ये होटल से निकल के राजघाट जाएंगे प्रगति मैदान भी जाएंगे होटल भी जाएंगे एयरपोर्ट भी जाएंगे ये अलग अलग वेन्यूज़ पर इनकी विजिट है और ये 11 बजे तक चलेगी रात के जो निर्देशिका में हमने रूट्स बताए थे तो शायद दिल्ली की जनता ने उसको पढ़ा है तो मैं धन्यवाद करना चाहता हूँ दिल्ली की जनता का कि उन्होंने सहयोग दिया आज आप जैसे देख सकते हैं ट्रैफिक काफ़ी कम है ये सजेस्टेड रूट था कि यहाँ पर मूवमेंट होगी आठ से नौ के बीच में तो काफ़ी कम ट्रैफिक रहा कंजेशन नहीं हुआ ट्रैफिक मैनेजमेंट भी ठीक हो गया तो ऐसे ही मैं अपील करूँगा दिल्ली की जनता से कि जो आठ नौ दस की निर्देशिका है उसको भी ध्यान से पढ़े और सहयोग दे Stating that Sweden stands behind Ukraine, Swedish MP Margareta Elisabeth Sederfell has said that Russia and Belarus, who were earlier invited to the Nobel Prize award ceremony, are not welcomed in the country. The Nobel Foundation has U-turned on a controversial decision to invite the ambassadors of Russia, Belarus, Iran to the Nobel Prize award ceremony after facing widespread criticisms, CNN reported. Talking to ANI in Dharamshala on Saturday, Sederfell said, It's not only about Ukraine, it's about a free world and it's about Sweden as well and the country being a part of the European Union. She said to support the sanctions on those people from Russia, from Belarus, who are on the sanctions list. They are not welcome to Sweden, not to the European Union, she said. A group of Swedish parliamentary delegation led by moderate parties Margareta Elisabeth Sederfeld came to Dharamshala to attend the 63rd Tibetan Democracy Day on Saturday. Swedish MP Janine Sofia Elm Eriksson from the Green Party also echoed the same sentiments. The previous year, Russia was not invited, so it was a surprise to everybody that the Nobel Foundation changed their mind this year, the MP said. But now they have withdrawn the invitation because many leaders of the different parties in Sweden said they would not join the ceremony or the celebrations and they are happy that the invitation was withdrawn, said Eriksson. Uh, I think it was a very surprising uh, thing to do for them. Uh, last year they were not invited because of Russia's invasion of Ukraine and the horrible war that is going on. And uh, so it was a surprise to everybody that they changed their minds and uh, but just now uh, i think maybe half an hour ago they withdrew that invitation because many uh, leaders of the different parties in sweden say they would not join uh, the ceremony or the celebrations if uh, the invitation still stood so they have drawn back and uh, that we are happy for the central government of September 2 formed an eight-member committee to examine one nation, one election. In the committee, former President Ram Nath Kovind appointed as chairman of the committee. Union H.M. Amit Shah, Congress MP Adir Ranjan Choudhury, former Raja Sabha Gulam Nabi Azad and others appointed as the members of the committee. The committee is aimed at examining the flexibility of one nation, one election. The committee has been set up for months before assembly polls in five states and ahead of Lok Sabha polls next year. The committee will examine and recommend specific amendments to the constitution, the representation of the People Act and any other laws and rules which would require amendments for the purpose of holding simultaneous election. It will also examine and recommend if the amendments of the constitution would require ratification by the states. The committee will also analyze and recommend possible solutions to scenarios such as hung house, adoption of no confidence motion or defection or any such other event in case of simultaneous elections. The committee will hear and entertain all persons, representations and communications which in its opinion can facilitate its work and enable it to finalize its recommendations. The government has decided to call a special session of parliament from September 18 to 22, where it speculated that the government could bring a bill for the proposal to take effect. That is all we have for this bulletin. Keep watching Hornville TV. Dang breaking news.